Alrighty then. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Matthew Baker of Beautiful New York Tours. I had originally planned a different video for today, but it occurred to me, uh, given the current news cycle, that one thing a lot of potential travels are concerned about right now at this moment is safety. Frankly, even during the best of times, even when we're not in the midst of protests and demonstrations and, you know, civic unaccountability and betrayal of public trust and all that stuff that we're talking about right now, even when things are going well, people are concerned about safety. People want to enjoy their visit to this city of 8 million people and not need to worry about getting robbed, raped, or murdered. Well, I respect that. That makes perfect sense. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about how best to enjoy New York City in relative safety. Now, the first thing is pretty obvious. Keep your eyes open. Be aware of your surroundings. There's a moving world around you. If you are walking across the street with your nose buried in your cell phone, never mind people who are actually trying to hurt you. Even by accident, you're going to get hit by a car. So definitely keep your eyes open. Put the phone away if you need it. Step to the side. Stop. You know, you wouldn't take out your cell phone and start taking pictures in the middle of a highway. Don't do it in the middle of Fifth Avenue either. Uh, one thing to consider, I remember, of course, that terrible incident a few years back uh, when a man plowed his car through a whole bunch of people in Times Square. Somebody mentioned an interesting safety measure uh, for a circumstance like that. The streets in New York are one way for vehicular traffic, but pedestrians can walk anywhere. So when you can, just as a matter of habit, always walk against traffic. Always walk uptown on a downtown street and vice versa, simply so that you can see what might be coming towards you. Now, there are certain aspects of New York City that are unpleasant and have to be avoided for a good time and in order to protect your own health and, in some cases, your wallet. For instance, one thing everybody talks about is the cartoon characters in Times Square, or as I like to call them, the cartoon mafia. Now, dressing up in a costume and posing for pictures is not in itself illegal. However, these guys are not out there for their health. Uh, they do expect to be tipped, and some of them are very brutally aggressive about it. Uh, it is not unusual for someone to photobomb your picture and then hustle you down for 5 or $10. If you don't want to tip them, next thing you know, you're surrounded by a group of these guys who won't let you move. Uh, there was one instance of an Elmo who got arrested after shoving a four-year-old kid towards traffic when his parents wouldn't tip him for a picture. So my advice is just stay away from these guys. It's not worth it. It's a photograph with Elmo. You can do it at Sesame Street. Um, also, in the Times Square area and elsewhere, you have the guys pushing their CDs. Now, most of these fellows look somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 years old. Honestly, what 20-year-old uses CDs anymore? Isn't everybody streaming nowadays? It's a very popular scam. You're going to find most of these CDs blank. No one needs to know your name. If you're walking by a guy hawking the CDs and he says, hey, what's your name? I say, my name's Matt. He writes Matt on a CD, $20. Like, I didn't ask for that. Well, I've ruined it now. I put your name on it. No one needs to know your name. Even I don't need to know your name, and I like you. So bear that in mind as well. These are basic survival techniques, and they don't require a huge amount of thought. They just require getting into some safe habits. Now, in the very worst situations, in, in horrible situations like, you know, an active shooter or something terrible like that, uh, the police have always had a simple three-step rule. Run, hide, fight. The first thing you do is try to get out of there. If it's an enclosed place, you go outdoors. If it's an outdoor place, you go down the block. You know, ideally, remove yourself from the danger. Uh, the most classic example we saw of this was on 9-11, when everybody started walking uptown to get away from the burning buildings. 
If you can't do that for some reason, if the doors are locked, the next option is to hide. You know, you are better off hiding in the broom closet than you are out in the line of fire. And if you can't do that either, then and only then you confront the person and do what you can to remove them from the situation. But that is absolutely the last resort. You do not do that unless running and hiding don't work. Always protect yourself before you protect others. I know that that might seem counterintuitive, especially if, like me, you're a parent. Your natural instinct is going to be to protect your child. But remember, you can't help anyone if you're hurt. So make sure that you are out of harm's way so that you are there and you are healthy and you are able to help others. Bear certain habits like this in mind and you're going to be all right. New York is the safest large city in the world. Uh, so naturally, I hope that none of this ends up mattering. We take safety courses in the hopes that they'll end up being a waste of time. You know, we don't want to have to use any of this stuff, and we don't expect to have to use any of this stuff. But if we do, we've got it. So when the time is right, please come and check out the safest large city in the world, and please check me out at Beautiful New York Tours. You can search Beautiful New York Tours on Facebook or email me at baker.tours at yahoo.com. Again, that is baker.tours at yahoo. Thank you very much.